Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today I want to talk about 10 amazing memoirs. I looked back at my Goodreads red shelf and I realized that all of the memoirs, autobiographies I read, I gave four or five stars to. So these are definitely the books for me. Some of these books on this list are really popular. So if you haven't picked them up because you didn't know whether they were the hype or not, I'm gonna tell you, read them because they are definitely not overhyped. These are definitely worth the hype and they're worth the read. I won't put them in any particular order because as I said, I gave all of these really high ratings. So let's just jump into them. So the first book I want to mention is Becoming by Michelle Obama. Now I listened to this on audio and I really think that it's, it's a great way to go with this because Michelle Obama narrates it uh, herself. And I think especially with, with memoirs, autobiographies, if the author narrates it, it really brings you closer to the author and the whole narrative. So I would really recommend it in audio format if you can uh, access it that way. I really enjoyed this because uh, Michelle Obama talks about her childhood grow growing up black in a black community in Chicago. Chicago, I believe. And it talks about her growing up, going to school, meeting of Barack Obama, of course, and then becoming the first lady. I really enjoyed uh, most of these parts, but I think I was truly connected to her or her narrative when she talked about her childhood and uh, her, her background or her community. I really see how she as a person really cares about others and throughout her life she definitely proved that she cares and she wants to change and she wants to do something to change the world around her and help people around her i guess i really enjoyed this and i highly recommend it the last book i read on this list is hunger by roxanne gay and i've actually also listened to this uh, on audio and she narrates it she talks about how she was gang raped at the age of 12 and then how she grew up with that uh, and how she coped with that how she turned to food in order to like cover her body or protect her body with food to, to form like this shield around her body to protect her from harm. It's really heartbreaking experiences she talks about how it is to live in a large body in the US, a body which is categorized as what, what was it? Uh, super morbidly obese, which is crazy. So how she talks about the practicalities of living in, uh, in a large body. And she also talks about how society treats a person living in a large body. So it is really heartbreaking. And I think everyone should read this. The next book on this list has also to do with the body. And it is a memoir by Kiese Lehmann called Heavy. I don't understand why this book is not more hyped or more talked about because it it is an amazing, amazing memoir. I listened to this, it is narrated by the author and I really recommend uh, listening to it if you can because it is such a beautifully written book and the narration has this written to it. It's really beautiful to listen to. It is a heartbreaking memoir though because uh, Kiese Lehmann talks about growing up as a black boy and uh, then becoming a professor of literature and being a black man at university. So he faces, as you can imagine, a lot of prejudice and a lot of racism. He talks about his difficult relationship with his mother and grandmother and the family, but he also mentions a lot of uh, social issues in the America around black people and black men in particular, but also uh, black women, for example. It is a very difficult book to read because uh, he um, he has, the, of, course, of course, this problem with his body. He suffers from anorexia. He uh, becomes a, a gambling addict at the end. So it is really difficult difficult, heartbreaking experiences, but he says it himself that this book is written for black people, so I'm not the target audience for this. But nonetheless, this is an amazing memoir and I gave it five stars. The next book on this list is Just Mercy by Brian Stevenson. So now I have read this before the movie on Netflix came out, so I think now much more people know about it. And it is definitely one of the books which is under hyped. And a lot more people should talk about it, a lot more people should read about it. Because it is such an important one and it is important to people to know about this and what's happening in the justice system in the US. So Brian Stevenson as a young lawyer formed this equal justice initiative to help the poor 
and uh, to help those who couldn't who couldn't afford the uh, legal help. He helped, for example, one man who was sentenced for a murder he did not commit. So you hear about all these awful cases of people being in prison for such minor things and being in prison for such a long time. And these uh, people would not be sentenced if they would be white, for example. So a lot of these cases are about black people and, uh, and it is just awful and it is harrowing how the justice system is so racist and it is so prejudiced against black people and poor people in general. So what Brian Stevenson did throughout his career is absolutely amazing and he changed the whole justice system a little bit by little bit and it is just an amazing memoir to read so I will highly recommend it. The next book on this list is a memoir I think many people have read and one uh, you're not likely to forget after you read it because this is something when, when you're reading it you're thinking this could not have happened, this sounds too out there to be true and it is educated by Tara Westover. So Tara grew up in a survivalist family in the mountains in Idaho, isolated from the world in a cabin without electricity, without any of the com comforts we have on, on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, they, uh, her father made them dig holes and make bunkers to store food because her believed the end of the world was coming. He didn't believe in institutions, so they didn't, go, they didn't go to school, they didn't go to hospitals when they get sick or they got into accidents. And believe me, the accidents detailed in this book are absolutely horrific and you think, how come? How could these people survive without going to the hospital? So her, she wanted to get out of there, even despite loving uh, the family, but her brother abused her and she did everything in her power to go and get an education. So she actually studied by herself and she actually got into university all by herself without any, without anyone helping her. So I think that's, pretty amazing and she ended up in Harvard I think and Oxford so this details all of her life and, and, and her background her family relationships and how she went to school and when she went to school she didn't know basic things like what is the Holocaust for example because she absolutely how could she know when she grew up without being in school without television without internet without anything and if you haven't picked this up already you should definitely do it the next book on this list is also about education and it is I Am Malala by Malala Yousafzai. I picked this up shortly after it came out and I think this is one everyone should definitely read because you know education is something we take for granted many times uh, and uh, we forget that some people don't have access to it or worse some people are denied access to it so malala comes from pakistan and it is uh, this one tells about her life there and how she was shot by the taliban one day when she was uh, going to school and uh, it is a heartbreaking story and this one would make you understand a bit better her country because it talks also about uh, how it is living in Pakistan and how it was at that time and how everything changed slowly when the Taliban came. It talks about uh, their history, it talks about her family, her how close relationship she had with her father for example and her extended family and, and how she had to flee because um, because she wanted to study and be educated, basically. It is a heartbreaking story. It is a story of survival and perseverance, and I think it is one everyone should read. The next book on this list is The Girl with Seven Names by Hyun Seo Lee. And I want to mention this together with uh, In Order to Live by Yeonmi Park. Both of these are memoirs of girls escaping from North Korea. Before I read these books, I didn't know much about uh, life in North Korea or North Korea in general. For me, it was really an eye-opener because I had no idea how life is there, how they go through these uh, periods without food because the country tries to be basically self-sufficient, but they're so poor, they barely have clothes, they don't have anything to eat. I think at some point these girls, one of these girls were eating leaves because they didn't have anything else. And how brutal the regime is, how basically they live in this, in fear of their neighbors, because if 
God forbid you do something uh, which is against the regime, then someone might, might rat on you, and everyone is is basically ratting on on everyone. So it's really hard, and it's really hard hitting and heartbreaking what's happening in that country. And also, I think in Yomi Park's uh, memoir, uh, in order to live, you also get an insight into how difficult it is to escape because they have these different escape routes and one of them is China. But in China, they don't, they can't go to the authorities because they will be sent back. So they have to live as fugitives, they have to hide. And many times uh, these young girls, because they're oftentimes young girls who escape, they get sold into marriage to these awful Chinese uh, men. So <laughs> I think it's absolutely heartbreaking and the way the Chinese are handling the situation is absolutely horrible. So the best choice for these women or these people, whoever escapes, is to is to get to South Korea. And they have to go towards Mongolia and Taiwan and all these kind of different routes because it's just so, so dangerous. So if you don't know anything about North Korea, you like memoirs, then you should definitely pick one of these up. The next book I want to talk about is Brave by Rose McGowan. Now, I picked this up because I was such a great fan of Charn by growing up. In this one, Rose McGowan talks about her childhood of growing up in a cult in Italy, I believe. I read this quite a while ago. Um, and then how she went to the US and she, and she uh, got into another cult, uh, the cult of Hollywood. And then she talks about how in Hollywood women are also exploited and how she was made into this bombshell and she had to look a certain way. She also mentions how power powerful figures in Hollywood take advantage of women and how women many times don't say anything because either they're afraid or they just they just want to forget about it and just move on with their career. I don't think she mentions him by name, but one of these powerful figures is Harvey Weinstein. And considering everything that's happening uh, with him uh, or happened recently in the US, I think it is a great book to read. Um, I think I listened to this on audio and she narrates it herself. And it is, it comes off as really powerful and an angry book, but I think that's the way this is meant to be. And I think she has every right to be angry because what happened to her both in childhood and later in Hollywood is absolutely devastating. And you really have to be powerful to speak up and you really have to be brave to speak up and not keep quiet because keeping quiet is just not the way to go. I really, really recommend this one. I think it was one that really impacted me at the time. And I think it is one every woman should read. And the last book on this list is uh, Confessions of a Sociopath by M.E. Thomas. I picked this up at random, I think, and I devoured it. I read it many, many years ago, but I still think about it this day, and I think I should reread it at some point. I have never heard about this book on booktube, and I think uh, more people should mention it, especially if you're into psychology and that's that kind of things. I think you would enjoy this one because what do you think when you hear about sociopaths? Your mind automatically goes to psychopaths, to, kill to killers, murderers, and basically criminals. So in this one, uh, we... Uh, we read about uh, the author who is a sociopath and uh, she is what, uh, what she terms a high-functioning, non-criminal sociopath. And in it she talks about how she likes to manipulate and uh, ruin people's lives basically. And she likes to get to know you intimately and to know your flaws so she can manipulate you. And how difficult it is for her at some points to to be normal in society and how she has to pretend. So I think these sociopaths are actually great actors. And she also talks about how sociopaths are often case CEOs of great companies because they're just so good at manipulating and they're so ruthless. And it is absolutely a fascinating book and I think everyone should read it. So these are all the books I have for you. I think they're not happy reads, but I think they're all fascinating reads and they're all important reads. So if you're into memoirs or you're not so much for nonfiction, 
then I think you should definitely pick these ones up because these are definitely not dry reads. They're really interesting stories about interesting people or stories that motivate you or stories that make you see the world uh, with different eyes maybe and the stories that open up your eyes they definitely open mine in many cases and i think if you're interested in the world around you if you're interested in people around you if you're interested in hearing about other people's experiences then then you should definitely give the memoirs a go um, and if you have any other memoirs I haven't mentioned that you have read and recommend, please put them in the comments below because I think I would definitely want, to, I would definitely like to pick some more up. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Oh, look